Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Those of you that are out there listening to us, you would say, hey, Pastor Webster songs like one who doesn't have no pain. Absolutely. Well, the truth of the matter is you don't want us to talk about that. I have said over and repeated times that when I wake up in the morning, I realize that I'm a human being in this flesh yes. because of the pain that I, I go through sometimes when I get up. But after a little while, those are some exercises that walk away. And I want to give God thanks for that. And we are here today to talk with you a little bit more on Let's Talk. And in the studio with us today is Sister Joyce. And Sister Joyce has so much to talk <laughs> to you about in regards to this. In our last episode, she shared with us that uh, she had to go and have surgery. Where did you go, Sister Joyce? For that first surgery? In Germany. In Germany. And the, the doctor told her, you're going to have a 10-year uh, pain-free and it, it lasted for 10 years. She was good. But then the pain came back. And today we want Sister Joyce to share with us some of the things that she experienced, some of the symptoms, some, how do you know what this is? And how do you, how do you handle this? What do you do with this <laughs> come? Because I'm sure that she went to doctor after doctor after doctor and still Sister Joyce is in pain, but praise God, bearable, you can't keep her down. If she has to walk with a stick, she walks with a stick. So Sister Joyce, tell us a little bit today uh, about this, how, what to expect. Yes, this pain is very um, harsh, debilitating. Um, sometimes you just you can't move. Some days I can't get out of bed. And on some days when I do get out of bed, if I put my foot on the floor, it shocks. It, my, mm. my body just starts <laughs> shaking. I know about I that. Mean, it is it is really really harsh on 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 your body and um it it feels like you're going crazy all over is hurting you you don't know what to do you don't know where to turn you you try to lay down as quiet and uh, as possible as not to get shocked so you get shocked you get some um, shocking pains going up and down uh, your leg your back your hip, <laughs> your toes, um, cramp. Sometimes my feet will just cramp and just turn a certain way. And you would be like, oh my God, I'm, I would be like, I'm getting a, a stroke or something. And um, there were times when I couldn't even feed myself. I, could, I just couldn't touch, not my, my legs, just couldn't touch the floor, couldn't touch on the wood. It was a real, I couldn't take care of myself. Jason, my son, because he was older than Janelle, he actually had to bathe me because everything was pain. I mean, <laughs> it was just really, really, really bad. Pain to where I'd be crying, shouting. I could remember one time my sister, Marilyn, she took me to the doctor. And when we reached my doctor, um, she said, Joyce, I, I, don't, I, want, I don't want you to cry, you know. And don't go in there and be complaining to the man. Just go in there and just try to be strong. And she's telling me. And I'm thinking to myself, if you only know. And I'm trying not to cry because we're entering the hospital. And somebody saw her from the hospital, a worker. And he came out and he said, no, 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 you cannot do that with her. She needs a wheelchair, man. She didn't want me to go in a wheelchair either. So the doctor came and he made her put me on a wheelchair. So she's rolling me in and she's like, oh God, Jess, everybody look at us now, they're going to be wanting to know what's wrong with you, she's telling me. And I'm thinking right now, I really don't care. I just want to reach by Dr. Mercelina. We were, we were going to the specialist. I just want to go to Dr. Mercelina. Pastor, I got in by the doctor and I started, no, I, yeah, I started telling him what the problem was. And then he told me, he said, listen, I'm going to Curacao. And when I come back, I said, no, 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 doc. You got to stop this. I cannot bear this pain for another week. 
And my sister just touched me and she said, you know what, Joyce? All the time you're saying that you're a Christian. You're saying you know God. Right in front of the doctor, she's telling me this. She said, now this is the time for you to um, be strong. She said, me on the side. And that little nudge that she gave me, it helped me. I just calmed down by the pain, Pastor. The pain was so much, I wanted a relief. And that is when they decided to um, send me to Colombia. Yeah. I have heard of people who suffer with the nerve. They talk about the shocks that go down the leg. And burning. They talk about how the leg tingles. The you tingling. Can feel the tingling. The numbness. Then the leg gets heavy. The heaviness. Then, you know. That is that. correct. And then sometimes when you go to the therapist, okay. they find like when they they find like knots. knots. Yes. Yeah. So they, they are... rub out the knots. Okay, they got to get those knots out. <laughs> and that in itself That's brings a, a lot, lot of pain. pain. I have also found that there are those who suffer with this, and they don't they don't want to complain. They don't want to say anything to anybody. So when you ask them how they are doing, they will tell you, "Well, praise the Lord." Not bad. Okay. I know someone like that for sure. Mm. But but I, I I know how much pain it is to be in it's a lot every of pain. day. And, and and you know why I'm stressing the pain is that that you all are born again believers. Jesus. You all have a relationship yes. with God. You have we have prayed over and repeated times for you yes. and for others. And still yes. there is that pain. Now, what is your consolation, Sister Joyce? When, when you know that you are a child of God, when you've been talking to your father, asking him to help you, and yet you are in pain. I'm sure he helped, yes. but yet you are in pain. What are your concerns? Yes, uh, he said that he is, a, is the comforter, mm. and he is the one who can give you comfort. And in all my pain and suffering, Pastor, and at and times I have called on him, and he has given me comfort. I have asked him, God, I feel like I have, have borne enough. And I've called on him, Pastor, and he, and he heard mm -hmm. me. And that gives me consolation. Knowing that I, I know that God heard me to give me that ease. For whatever reason, Pastor, he has allowed us to continue. I have said to him, and this is through your preaching and your teaching, that if he didn't Whatever, it, whatever he, what, why, ever it is, he's allowing this to continue. If it's something on my part that I have done, I want to ask him for forgiveness. That's one. Mm -hmm. Just let me know that he is there, and for that he says he has, he will never leave me, and he will never forsake me. And that's the next thing that gives me consolation. So the Word of God is the next thing that gives me consolation. And then the Holy Spirit that bears witness with what the Word of God says. Because the Holy Spirit is my helper and He is my guide. And sometimes, Pastor, He has brought people to bring bush. I could remember one time um, Sister Collins sent different bushes home. Sister June's sent different bushes home. Another time I could, and they, what I'm trying to say is they help. Mm -hmm. um, on other occasions, people just showed up at the house and they were able to help me boil some bushes and a lot of things together, give me to drink, gave me um, an ease. Um, I spent three mo months uh, in my mother's house because it was so bad. And Jason had to do a lot of taking care of me. And they were feeling bad about that. So I went to their house so my sisters could take help to take care of me, prepare my food and stuff like that. And Pastor, that was another encouragement to me. Another time my sister-in-law saw how bad it was and she brought me to Antigua. So I stayed with her another three months. And she took care of me and I, I just give God the praise and the glory. I say, you know, thank you, God, thank you. In this, in this, you are still taking care of me. And for that, I am grateful. 
So, Pastor, you might you want to say something. One of the things, Sister Joyce, I am sure that you have prayed before and said, I would, I'd be shocked if you did not pray and <laughs> and say, God, use me. Yes. Had you ever prayed that prayer? Yes. But many times when we pray the prayer, I'm God, getting... use me. We, we normally think Don't. of using me and like teaching a Bible uh, class or teaching us on the school or helping the ladies or, you know, we normally think that way. But God uses us in so many different ways. Now, can you see now, Sister Joyce, yes. that since you've been praying to Him that God is using you. Yes. He's allowing this. To, he, he is causing this. I'm, I'm going to say causing. Yes. He's causing this to happen to you because you are His. He's using you at look today. He's using you in such a way that He can help others. What are your thoughts on that? Yes. I pray and I'm telling you, be careful for what you pray for. If you're not ready to meet up to it with God, because let me tell you, He will put you to the test. And He did with me. I have constantly been praying, been praying. Lord, let my life glorify you. That is my main purpose. I say, Lord, I know you want me to bring you glory. So whatever you want to do with me, that, that's what I pray. You have me, I'm yours. You could do with me whatever you feel like. I told the Lord that, but I had no idea that he was going to allow me to be sick this long. And Pastor, I have had seven other surgeries. And the, the seven have all been successful. So that was another thing that helped me to praise God. I have a lot to thank God for. As a matter of fact, I could have been dead, Pastor. As a matter of fact, I should have been dead. But God spared me. I mean, so what, I, what, what do I have to complain about? I have nothing to complain about, Pastor. Nothing to complain about. But Pastor, I have now seen he has answered that prayer. Amen. Amen. And you know, <laughs> one of the things that we need to learn to do is to allow God to use us however He sees fit to use us. And then be careful that we do not blame Him wrongfully. Yes. Because if He doesn't, if He doesn't heal us, yes. and we're going to come in our next episode and, and we're going to share something that will shine some light on that. Yes. If He doesn't heal us uh, the way how we wanted to be mm -hmm. healed, if He allowing us to go through this, or if He has brought us to this, He's doing it for a reason. reason. He's doing it for a purpose. And, and when we ask Him to this. use us, that's what He's doing. He's using all of this for His, his glory honor and, his and for His glory. Sister Joyce, it's such a blessing to just be here with you and to hear from you and let the folks hear from you in regards to your relationship with God in spite of your sickness, in spite of your suffering, how much you love the Lord, how much you trust Him to, to do what He's doing in your life. I know that that did not happen overnight. In our next episode, we will talk about that. So I want to thank you so much for uh, being with us today. And to the listeners, we want to thank you so much for listening. And as we often say, we ask you to share this devotion with a friend or with a loved one. You never know who you can help. That's all we are trying to do. We are trying to help as many people as we can. God bless you. We hope to be back next Saturday on Let's Talk.